we're going to solve is the non-structurable change question. And what this question is asking is it says, given an array of positive integers representing the value of coins, write a function that returns the minimum amount of change that you cannot create. Not that you can create, that you cannot create. The given coins can have any positive integer value and aren't necessarily unique. So let's take the small example 1, 2, and 5, right? And, and let's sort of work through from an example point of view how this would be solved. So we have 1, we have 2, we have 5, right? So the change, let's say minimum change, change created equals zero, right? So you iterate through the array. You first see that, okay, so I can create one cent. So this is gonna become one. And because I can create one cent, I can create one plus two cents, which means I can create three. And then you can see, okay, two plus five is seven. So it went from one, to three to seven. Now, between the values of one and seven, can we create one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? Well, we know we can create one, we know we can create three, and we know we can create seven, right? Now the question is, can we create the values in between such that, can we create two, can we create four, five, and six. Can we create these values in between, right? So if you look back at our original input array, you can see that in no possible way could you add any two of these numbers or a single one to create four, right? So four would be the minimum change that we can't create. Right, so four, and why is four the minimum change that we can't create? Well, that's because you cannot find two values within this array that sum to four, right? You find one value sums to one, one value sums to two, we could take one plus two to get three, but once we get to four, we can't take any single or multiple values to add in order to get to four, right? So let's see why that is, right? So for this algorithm, one thing I want you to notice on this smaller example over here versus the larger one, the larger sample size down here, is that this array is sorted, right? This makes it incredibly easy to come up with a more optimal solution. Now for this question, there are two solutions. The first solution being brute force, where you iterate multiple times over this array, and then you come up with every possible um, amount of change that this array can create. Um, it's really time consuming to implement and not efficient. And more than likely, if you're doing it in an interview, you'll either A, run out of time, or B, the interviewer will be dissatisfied that you weren't able to find the optimal solution, which is way easier, right? So let's take the larger example on the bottom, right? I think it's easier. So let's say, first thing we're gonna wanna do right? Let's try and sort the input array, right? Right? So given the example uh, on on the side here, the sorted value of that would be one, one, two, three, five, seven, and 22, right? Now, let's see. Okay, so if, if we're trying to find the minimum amount of change, we can say, okay, we can create one, one cent from here. Then we move on to the next one. We know now we can create two cents worth of change. Then let's move on to the next one. We can know we can create four cents worth of change. Moving on to the next one, we know we can create seven cents worth of change. We know we can create, uh, 
this is four, seven, twelve, twelve cents worth of change. And we know we can create 19 cents worth of change. So pretty much what I did was I iterated from one all the way up to seven, right? And I did, I just uh, iteratively summed all of these values and then I got to 19, right? So we know from the value of one to 19, we can come up with a combination of addition of these numbers to create any change between one and 19. And if you don't believe me, please double check that and, and you'll see that yes, and any any possible combination we can find to make uh, changes change from value one to 19. If we just, let's say cherry pick 10, we can take this five plus three plus two to create 10. If we say 13, we can take seven plus three plus two plus one would give us 13 and so on. Now, when we get to the last value in our array, right, 22. Well, 22 plus 19 is 41, right? But something something's odd here, right? If we look at, at 19, we can create by adding all of these numbers, but we're not entirely sure we can create 20. Um, and and if, if, you, if you are unsure about that, the reason why we are not able to create 20 is because if we sum all of these numbers up to seven, we get 19, right? But then the only other coin left for us to sum is 22, which is way larger, which gives us 41, which is way out of the bounds of 20, right? So the answer in this case would be 20, as you see over here. Now let's let's I think it's maybe a little easier to come up with like a math formula that can signify why this is. So essentially what we're going to do is so we've, we've sorted our input array in step one. Next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to iterate over coins array, right? And we're going to say this, if the first we're going we're gonna to take care of our, our, our base case, right? So base case, if the first coin in the coins array is not one, then return one. So let's say, for example, this, this array started with two, for example, right? Instead of one. If this first uh, element in index zero is not one, then we can return one because we already know that we can't create a single cent of change. That would be our minimum change that we cannot create, right? So that's our base case. Now for our, and maybe it's best if we swap these two. Okay. Uh, make this a three. Okay, and four. Okay, so in our fourth step, this is exactly this is where it's sort of we're gonna explain why it is that we can create one to nineteen, but not twenty, in the example above, right? So as we iterate. If we find a number in the coins array that is greater than change created plus one, and and in this in this um, in this example, change created would be represented by these values, the the summing of the coins. Right. So if if as we iterate, if we find the number in the coins array that is greater than change created plus one, then break loop and return 
change created plus one, right? So, so if we look back at our example, we see we can create between values of change between one and 19, but we cannot create 20. So therefore we return change created plus one. Now let's see this um, in code, right? So let's take care of our base case first. So we say if coins, well, actually, we have to do, the first thing we should do is arrays dot sort coins. So we sort it so that we, that way we know that if there are any ones uh, in the coins array, that it'll be towards the front of the array or element index zero, sorry. If coins sub zero is not equal to one, return one, right? So this is our base case, right? We say that, okay, the, the first element in the coins array has to be equal to one. Otherwise, we know we can't create one, right? So we've sorted our array. Now, we're gonna create a variable to hold, to hold the, um, let's call it change created. It's gonna start off at zero, right? And we're gonna do a for each loop. Coin, coins. And we're going to say if coin is greater than change created plus one, then we break out of this loop because we know we know we don't need to go any further. We found the maximum amount of change that we can create, right? So otherwise, let's say this is not the case, then we take change created is equal to change created plus Coin, right and then lastly what we do is once so so ideally we're always going to hit this break condition at some point and what we're going to do then is we're going to take change created plus one and we're going to return that now let's let's look back over this code and see what we did right so the first thing we did was we sorted the array right after that we checked our base case right so we're saying that okay we must have at least uh, a, a, a penny in our coins array in order to calculate the minimum change. If we don't even have a penny, then we know that's the minimum change that we cannot create, right? Then we initialize a variable to hold our change that we can create. Next, we iterate through the coins, the sorted coins array, right? And as we're iterating, if we see a coin that is greater than the change created plus one, then we break out of it. We already know, hey, we found the maximum amount of change we can create uh, sequentially, and we need to break out of this. Otherwise, we're just we're just adding we're adding the coins up essentially in in line twenty four. We're just adding the coins up, and then finally we just return the amount of change we can create plus one. The plus one signifies the 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 change that we cannot create, right? Let's run this code, see if it works. It looks 12 of 13. Array out of bounds. Y out of bounds. Let's see. Hmm. Ah, see, another base case that I did not that I did not take into consideration. Really important. See, I'm doing these problems, you know, as I explain them. Um so it never says that this coins array has to be populated. It just says you're given an array of positive integers representing the values of these coins in your possessions. Now, if I was in an interviewing, if I was in an interview, first thing that I would ask, or I should ask is that, is it possible to have no value in the coins array, right? And apparently, yes it is, right? 
So if there is no value in the coins array, so we could do this, uh, coins dot Let's try this and see if this works. Yes. So yeah, so that, that was the check we needed to do. We need to do, this is why it's so important to think of your base cases, right? See, I thought of one that if the first coin in the array is not one, then we need to return one. But I didn't think of the case in which this coins array was given to us empty, right? So I just needed to add a little uh, a check there that if the coin, if the size of the coins array is zero, that we know we return one. Let's submit it. Awesome, uh, cool. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. Thanks.